Hey, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware and Hot Tech here in scenic New York, the Big yeah. Apple, with my buddy Alex Katusian from Qualcomm. And we are here celebrating Qualcomm's 40th anniversary. Isn't that 40 something? Years. Were you around with Qualcomm back no, then? No. <laughs> no. I don't think so. I was in school, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, but uh, I think uh, I've, been, I've been here 23 years. Okay. So wow. more than 50% of the time, I would say. And, and, and what, just for the folks that don't know who you are, uh, probably should know who you are, Alex Katuzzi and Qualcomm, what's your, what's your role here? I am the group GM for our mobile compute, XR, and wearables businesses. Okay, yeah. just a little bit. Just, that you yeah, want just there. a little bit. Good yeah. stuff, yeah. good stuff. So interesting, here in, in, in this venue in New York, you guys are uh, ringing the opening bell tomorrow at the, yeah, yeah. At the NASDAQ, which is yeah. great. Uh, NASDAQ traded QCOM, uh, QCOM. Um, you are celebrating 40 years. We're looking at uh, a table of innovation downstairs, which mm. is interesting stuff. Uh, back then, 40 years ago, what the technology looked like, and then today, and a lot of products you're in from ring doorbells, you know, IoT kind of stuff yeah. to smartphones and other, you know, sorts of technologies and, and data center and, you know, um, automotive. Um, what's that journey been like um, that you folks have been on? Because the, the product expansion, the market expansion you've been on lately is, is pretty big. Really big. I think just the value of semiconductors has come up quite a bit in the past few years. And uh, the, the uh, complex integrated semiconductors that are available today are in everything. Like, you know, imagine, you know, everything from your home to the devices that you use every day. In fact, I was talking the other day, if, uh, if you were to leave your house without the phone, what would happen? You know, it's, it's usually a pan feeling of panic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even if you leave your wallet behind, you actually have your yeah. wallet in your phone. Yeah. And, you know, directions, anything that you want to look up, it's just indispensable. Mm -hmm. And and that's become the norm for. So if you're inside your home, it's full of semiconductors. If you're going someplace and you're taking your smart devices with you, it's fairly highly complex semiconductors in your automobile. The electric cars are highly complex semiconductors and they self-drive now. You go into your place of business and the tools that you use, your PC, your tablets, mm. phones, earbuds, everything is all complex semiconductors. So the journey has been unbelievable and it's kind of exponentially risen in the past few years. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you folks uh, exploded onto the scene with uh, Snapdragon and, and PCs uh, over the last couple of years, um, really making a statement with the folks at Microsoft Copilot. Uh, uh, plus PCs, things like that. I know you had some announcements at Computex. Um, let's maybe talk a little bit about that and what, how that uh, ecosystem is, uh, you know, expanding today. Yeah. So approximately a year ago, we introduced the Snapdragon X Elite devices for PCs onto the market, and we started off with uh, twenty-four. Uh, actually, sorry, twenty-two designs at the time when we okay. launched. And, and that was kind of unheard of because we entered at the premium tier. Mm. So $1,000 and above PCs were where we entered. And the acceptance of the Snapdragon X Elite in the premium tier was never done before. Like nobody entered the market at the premium. They kind right. of built their way up. It's a high bar. Yeah. So, so we entered and we got accepted there, which was great. Uh, now we have over 100 designs that are going to be in production or in development now through 2026. So we went from a year ago till now, we 5 x the wow. number of designs that we have. And then the traction of it is pretty good in terms of um, its acceptance into the PC market. Some markets were somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 12% share. Um, in some regions, we're even much higher than that um, because the acceptance of an AI PC is bigger in some of these regions. Yet we're building the brand and we're building our ecosystem of software capable solutions, the ISVs that we're working with. And so I think it's been quite a bit of acceleration in the past year. And we announced uh, also, actually um, Dell Tech World, they announced a PC that has our um, AI 100, which is an inference based solution. Oh, yeah. Actually sold in data centers. Yep. They're integrating it onto a laptop and they're using that as a pretty big personal type of a data center that people can have and lots of 
big, big models can run on that device. I think it has 64 gigabytes of memory and um, just by itself between 100 to 200 tops. Uh, so this is the A100 accelerator in like an M2 module in a laptop? Uh, or is not it a quite a, build? Not quite a, a M2 module because it's a custom built package, but yep. they actually integrated it into the motherboard wow. of, the, of the laptop. And so that laptop can get used in multiple industrial or, or um, enterprise-based applications based on the verticals that Dell wants to go after, which is, which is great. And then we also announced us entering the data center market mm. uh, based on <laughs> our CPU and our NPU assets. Yep. Uh, you know, we, we have a pretty strong CPU asset that we acquired a few years back, and uh, we introduced X Elite with uh, Orion CPU, mm -hmm. and then we moved to the mobile, um, we had a version of the Orion CPU in mobile that outperformed actually the, the PC CPUs. Um, and then we're, we moved that same solution into automotive. And then this September, we're going to do our second generation of uh, PC laptop chipsets that we're going to introduce at the Snapdragon Summit. All right. So Snapdragon X, we can't say what yet, but the second gen That's right. of so, Elite. That's right. Beyond Elite. That's right. Wow. Yeah. And so I think... We're well on our way to get established in that market. And uh, the rest of the personal smart devices are coming along really well too. Our growth in handsets been great. You know, uh, we're growing faster than, than the actual market itself. Mm. Uh, we, have, we have multiple um, multi-year solutions that we've signed now with our customer base, which puts us at a very stable, in a very stable situation. Uh, the the uh, AR glasses are taking off like crazy. The forecasts are just going up and up. Um, the fact that it's such an acceptable form factor, and now it, it can see what you see and hear what you hear, and mm. you don't have to pull your phone out of your pocket right. and you start asking questions. And kind of AI, conversational AI is bringing life to these types of devices. And so, so the complement of glasses, phone, watch, earbuds, laptop, mm. tablets, becomes your personal device environment. And so I think we're doing quite strong in all of them. We're, we're the only ones that go across all those devices. Yeah, you're all over the edge. And um, you know, if you think about whether it's glasses, whether it be your smartphone, whether it be laptops, I mean, clearly you have the silicon prowess there. Interesting, the data center is a totally different animal. Yes. Um, that's gonna be you know, a lot of work for you guys. Um, any, any, any thoughts on you know, how that execution, you know, happens and, you know, the timing of it. And, um, well, you know, so is there a market segment you're going after first? I don't know if you can talk about that yet. But. Well, obviously we're going to go after the CPU portion of the data center and the inference NPU portion of the data center. So anything we have in, in, the, in the form of an asset that allows inferencing yep. for, for big data centers to happen, we're, we'll, we'll play in there because I think we have a pretty good, uh, total cost of ownership, including performance per watt advantages that others can't bring. Mm -hmm. um, but we will reveal more and more about our data center plans in the next few months, and you'll see kind of a roadmap of where things are headed that way. That's great, because I remember the Nuvia acquisition, when you guys picked them up, they were actually working hard on a data center solution. That's right. And the first product you came out with was client-based, PC client-based. That's client right. Based. We have to remember that you know they already had a solution based on they have some yeah. IP going on yeah, yeah, yeah. coming in. So that's exactly correct. Yeah, yeah, interesting yeah. stuff for sure, and uh, another good story of market expansion. Yeah, yeah. folks, I, I don't think folks may recognize not everybody recognizes that you know basically anything that isn't an iPhone, you guys power. Right, in, especially yeah. in the U.S., there's a, there's other solution providers obviously out there, whether it be MediaTek and whatnot of the world. But you, the market share you have in Android is significant. It's significant. And I think what's more important, Dave, is the fact that Qualcomm and Snapdragon are the bar that sets premium tier experiences. Yeah. So uh, our Snapdragon 8 Elite mm -hmm. is the bar for anything premium tier that the handset market comes out with year after year. Right. And if you look at customers such as Samsung, uh, Oppo, Vivo, Xiaomi, Honor, uh, Motorola, all those guys set their standards with our eight elite solutions that, that they plan for year after year. Yep. And it's, it's the only market, actually, if you look at it, that is not stifled by innovation. It continues to grow mm. in innovation. Today, um, the camera quality on these phones are phenomenal, like phenomenal. And because 
the image signal processors have AI built into them. All sorts of AI functionality are already embedded into, and you won't even know. Right. Like dark light pictures, sunlight pictures, multiple segmentations of your of your photos, um, how fast you can capture a moving object, erasing something, uh, adding color or editing. All those things are done by AI, and people don't even know because it's in the background. Right. Uh, gaming uh, is a massive, you know, the innovation in gaming keeps continuing to grow because it's the biggest platform for a game. Like people used to sit in front of a console, they still do, but yeah. the biggest platform for gaming is actually the mobile mobile devices. And so people stop yeah. using other devices because the phone is so good and it keeps yeah. innovating year after year after year. And that's why we take such pride in our eight elite setting the standard for everybody else. And yeah. that's that's why it's so important. I'm pulling out of my pocket. I have a I have a one plus thirteen. It's a great phone. Snapdragon yeah. eight elite. Um the camera on it is fantastic. And it's really it is. It's about the computational photography. Yeah. yeah. Um that does just amazing stuff, you know, versus you know, years ago when it was just kind of a point and shoot thing and you hoped for the best, whether it was image stabilization or what have you. Um yeah, now this it's it's really a, a powerful camera. Yeah, I mean, so. I hardly, hardly see. It. If I see someone pull out a digital still camera, I'm like, what? What's yeah. happening? What happened? We got we got a guy pointing a camera at us right yeah. now. Who's <laughs> who's very Marco's behind the camera, and he's very he's he's one of those uh, D DSLR you know holdovers. But um, you can see people shoot movies with the. I know we could have phones, we yeah. could have a phone on a tripod, yeah. be no problem. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll, let's close up a little bit on um, Snapdragon X again and just give folks maybe a little bit of an update on um, Snapdragon PC, how the ecosystem's going with, with ISVs. Um, I think I heard um, uh, Cristiano speak at his keynote about something like 93% of the software that folks run yeah. day to day runs natively on Snapdragon. Yeah, yeah. How's that coming along? Because I know that some of the, again, the holdouts that, you know, say, hey, I, I don't know if everything's going to be compatible. Yeah. That's becoming less and less of a concern. Much, much, much less of a concern. I'll, I'll just give you a quick rundown. First of all, like I said, we started in the premium tier, but we, we drove the roadmap all the way down to, you know, below 600. And so now we have solutions from below 600 all the way to way above 1,000. Hmm. And uh, the cool part is, Every AI experience is the same across all those tiers. We kept the AI experience exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Even though the performance of CPU and GPU are less, but the NPU performance is exactly the same. And therefore, you kind of start to attract um, creative ISVs, whether it's in music editing or voice editing or, or picture editing or video editing software. All of those companies start to work with us because the NPU is so efficient. Mm -hmm. And if you, I'll give you a, a metric. So if you look at Copilot Plus, there's pervasive AI models running in the background continuously, continuously. And if they, if they didn't run that on our MPU and they use the CPU and GPU, yeah. their days of use hours would become massively less. They would actually burn hours of days of use just running those models on CPU and GPU mm. versus just minutes with us. So they save quite a bit of performance per watt um, mm -hmm. capability running on the NPU. So we attract a lot of ISVs that way. Second, um, the software figures that you mentioned. Um, if you look at metrics that even Microsoft tracks, mm -hmm. you'll see that 93 plus percent of the time that you're spending behind your PC, it's you're running native apps on Snapdragon. Yeah. And the others are running an emulation by Microsoft that outperforms any other emulator that's in the market. So with a regular user, you just won't see the difference. There's a prism, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. prism. You just won't see the difference. And, and then on games, we have 1,700 games running on Snapdragon today. We have multiple anti-cheat um, algorithms that are open for ARM now. Um, most importantly, easy anti-cheat from Epic. Yeah, that we have was a deal with. It was a big, to... it was a big deal that yeah. everyone uses. Yeah, and Epic is a great partner of ours now. Remember, Epic is one of our best partners on mobile games. Sure. Okay. okay so now they sense. actually looked at the ARM uh, Snapdragon-based PCs, and they're like, "Wow, this is actually a difference maker. It makes it makes sense for me to participate mm -hmm. in that market as well, even though we're not l a large part of the market. But I think the growth." Potential is huge. 
And so um, we have we have multiple games running now, and it's casual gaming. It's not like it's not like a professional gaming, but everyone plays casual gaming. So 1080p resolution at 120 frames per second, perfect casual gaming capability, mm -hmm. where you can run many many of these games, and and you'll have a great time entertaining yourself. Video capability, camera capability, all of those are awesome. Audio capability, awesome, because you spend so much time uh, video conferencing with people. But yeah. then we get very creative from an AI perspective on how to make video conferencing even better. Zooming in on people that they're talking, even if they're in the back of the room, all of these things are included in what we offer. And so I think we are kind of breaking down every barrier that was put in front of us. And now the acceptance of this solution really comes down to people taking in the brand, making sure it actually sells through from a retail perspective. And in, in the enterprise, we're knocking down major enterprises one after the other. So that has somewhat of a domino effect on other enterprises saying, okay, if they use it, I can use it. Yeah. And you know, multiple applications in the enterprise as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, and, and we should probably wrap on, on enterprise, but that's an interesting question. Um, how how are you folks with respect to, and I think the IT managers of the world care mostly about this kind of stuff, uh, manageability and security um, are all the all the hooks in there for, for Snapdragon as well? Yes, they are. And uh, let me tell you, I think the first thing they're going to look at is productivity. And if someone can be more productive on a Snapdragon-based PC and, they, and they can work from many different places and don't have to plug their plug their PCs in every once in a while because... The performance doesn't diminish when you unplug yeah. versus our competitors. And so when they see that, and then they see AI capabilities that are built into this thing, whether it's running Copilot Plus or code generation for them and things like that, they start to sometimes even substitute in their manageability and their security, yet we have solutions for them. Uh, what they look at is, am, is my group going to be more productive? Is my group going to be better off with this device? Is it going to be more comfortable for them to use it? And if it is, we kind of go in and manage the rest with them. Sure, yeah. sure. Makes sense. Yeah, I, I run currently, and this was kind of an acid test for me. Um, I put a, a Lenovo Yoga Slim 7X in the bag, yeah. uh, Snapdragon X Elite PC. Um, and my workflow is you know, a lot of office productivity, but content creation with Photoshop, and I do video editing as well on the fly. No problem. No problem. Um, yeah. You know, I, I use a, an app called Power Director from CyberLink. Runs great. Um, never had really any um, sort of compatibility issue or performance issue. And yeah, the battery life is just fantastic. The great testimony from ah, Dave. It's, Dave. The like, it's the really truth. Really, absolutely great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I and I was you know I was a little skeptical because I do have more of a a little bit a higher end creative professional kind of workload that yes, you know, yes, flow yes. that I follow. Yes. Um, but no, no problem at all. Fantastic. So um, yeah, I can attest to that for sure. Yeah. Um, well, Alex, it was great meeting you here in Thank New York. You. Thank you for your time uh, from client PCs to phones to XR glasses to the data center. You guys are coming out guns. Much appreciated. Good Thank stuff. You. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Dave. Yeah. Great. Thank you.